Hey guys, it's Landon from RH. This is the second video that we're doing in, in what I think is going to be a two-part set that shows you how to set up this little QGIS project for <clears throat> this utility uh, utility job we've got. we got to get out and, and inspect some overhead utility poles here southeast of Stockton, California. So if you watched the first video, which I'll try and remember to link to in the comments, we added our USDA NAEP imagery in the background, just put those in a group here, and then we added some polygons from the, uh, we added a polygon layer for the county parcels and just cropped those out, and then we went ahead and styled, styled the, the polygon, the parcel layer a little bit. What I want to show you in this video is how to, uh, we're actually, I decided some road names would be helpful for the crew. So we're going to import the county roads layer, and I'm going to show you how to get a real crude uh, road label. And this data isn't really set up, the county data is not set up super well for labeling, but it'll be good enough to help the crews navigate a little bit. And then we've got some utility data over here. Uh, we've got some latitude, longitudes, and some pole IDs. Uh, we'll, we'll try and get those into QGIS. That might be a little bit clunky, but we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and get that road data added. So we're going to go over to the layer menu. We're going to add a new vector layer. And we are going to go path to our county road data. So for Cosette, this is on our data drive under GIS data, vector counties, San Joaquin County. This time we're going to go into roads and we're going to grab what they call the streets shape file. And we'll go ahead and add that. So you can see I've, I've got some road center lines in now. They're, they're hard to see. That's okay. That's actually... Uh, that's actually a, a plus. We do we, we got way too many here, um, so we need to do kind of another save as. So let's let's select just what's on that layer. I'm sorry, just what's over our our images in our project area, and then. We are going to say, we're going to right click on that, say export, save selected features as. And we are going to save this here. We'll call it lines, roads, center lines. Save, and we'll hit OK. It's going to save our road center lines out. So now we can get rid of this street layer. All right, and while we're doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off our our uh, parcels layer. So what I want what I'm going to do now is I'm going to style this. So I'm going to go in and right click on the go to the properties of the layer. And we're actually going to make this to where the the uh, the center lines basically disappear. So we're going to go ahead and say let's see here. I want to choose a line pattern. So we're going to say dotted line and then we're going to go into the color and we are going to make this a really light gray. So I'm going to go 225 on my red, green, red, green, blue values. And then we're going to give it a fade too. So you're barely going to be able to see this. I'm going to make it one pixel. Okay, so that's going to almost disappear. But we want the we want the labels, so we're gonna go ahead and and uh, sorry guys, my cam my screen recorder sometimes gets gets in the way there. So we're gonna say single label. Street name is what we want. Uh, we're gonna go up to our text. Um, we like to do road names and righteous here. Oop, that's a Google font that we use. Free Google Web font that we use for road names. Righteous. And I'm going to say go 12 points. We'll make it uh, just regular so we only have one style. Let's go ahead and apply that. You can see it showing up there. It looks like it's got the... I'm going to give it a 2 pixel buffer since we've got that background imagery in. Yeah, yeah, looked better, a little better. Let's go 4 pixels. Alright, so you can see that you know, the labels aren't super fantastic but they get yeah, they get the job done right and you can barely see that line which is is kind of what I want I really only want the labels 
So now we can turn our parcels back on. And I've got a I've got a selection there, so let's get let's deselect those. It's just taking it a minute. Okay, so now we've got our APNs, our road names set up. What we want to do now is we want to try and get these utility poles plotted in here, right? So I've got latitude, longitudes with a with a pole ID here. So what, what we're going to do first, there's a so, apologize, my favorite word whisker, is we're going to, uh, I just typed that in Excel, but we want to get this into a text file. I am going to try this. It'll probably work with UTF. That's just the text encoding. We'll try this. We'll try UTF first. And we're going to say, we're going to just call this poll locations. And let's just stick that again in our temp folder. Save that there. Now I'm not going to close Excel, I'm just going to move this over because we might have to make some changes to that. So we're going to go back to QGIS under the layer menu and we want to add a layer and we're going to, right here, this is a really cool tool in Excel called Add Delimited Text Layer. So we're going to go browse for that file, poll locations. And it, right here it's UTF-8 so that works. It's comma separated. Okay, we don't have a record with field name so that's fine. Okay, so we got to tell it here where the where the you can do well-known text or points. We've got points, so it needs to know what is the easting and the northing. So the easting, in case the X is uh, field three, that's our um, that's our longitude. The Y field or the northing is going to be field two. That's our northing. We don't have a Z or an M. Now it is not in state plane zone three these are lat longs now i don't know what lat longs they are in i assume somebody just was out with a handheld gps receiver so we're just going to go wgs84 and i'm not really worried surveyors about the differences in the in the datums if you're watching this they just need these like within 20 feet so this is fine and this is going to import as a text string which is fine so let's see what happens there and it's just telling me hey we're going to use an approximate conversion from WGS 84 to state plane zone 3 that's okay and you can see we got some pole locations now right which is awesome that's kind of the whole reason we were setting this up so let's go in and change this you know what it's, it doesn't want to do that so QGIS is a little bit funny when you import text data like this you, you've got to resave it I like to resave it as a GeoJOSON file. So, and we're going to use our layer convention. So, I'm going to say points, overhead poles. So, we're going to save that as a GeoJOSON. And I'm going to tell it, save this out as zone three. Okay, and then I can delete this text file that we first imported. So now when I go into the layer properties, I'll be able to change some things. So we're going to start with the symbology. We're going to come in here. That is a really horrible green. We're going to make these like a bright reddish kind of magenta. So that's okay. And I'm going to make this, the, I'm going to make these 15 pixels. And we're going to give them a little thicker a little thicker border. We're going to do three pixels. So let's see how those look. All right, I, I might even make those a little better, a little bigger. Sorry, let's go 20. Okay, so now we've got our poles, and I actually want those above the road center lines. Let's drag the road center lines down here. And you know, it'd be nice to to label those pull IDs. Let's see if we can do that. So we'll come in here to our properties again. And I actually want to rename those fields probably. Oh man, it's not going to let me do that. That is a bummer. Oh, let's make it editable. There we go. So this is poll ID. And this is, this was the latitude. And this is the longitude. 
So even though we reprojected this, you can still see the latitude and longitudes in the attribute table. So now we're going to go to labels and we're going to make another label again. And we're going to tell it label the poll ID. And we'll go dosis on this again. You know what? Let's just do Nanito Black just because I'm feeling dangerous. We'll go 14 points. And let's put a little buffer on it. We'll do three pixels again. So now you can see our poll locations are showing up, so the guys will be able to see that in the field. So uh, we're about done. Uh, the, the last thing we'll do is we can set this up to sync to Mergen Maps. I'm running out of time, so I won't show you that in this video. I will definitely do another video where I teach you guys how to sync set up and sync projects with Mergen Maps. But now we're, we're ready to go. This is, uh, we'll make this way easier for the field crew to navigate in the field. They'll be able to, you know, navigate to these. They'll be able to see some fence lines here that, that roughly match the parcel lines and they'll have some road names and they'll be able to see these poll locations on their phone and they'll have the poll ID. So this'll, this'll save us a bunch of time. You know, when the guys are working over a, a large area like this, it gets a little tough. I just realized I don't have enough data here, do I? These are a little farther over than I thought they were going to be in here. So that's cool. I got these poll locations now, and I and I realize I don't have enough data. So Cosette will be able. I'll work with Cosette tomorrow, and we'll we'll put in the missing data. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.